Before we ramp up into writing applications, it's important to use the coding style that most professionals use. There is no point learning a coding style that is outdated and then in future showing you the new way to write code. This can lead to discomfort and unfamiliarity when then attempting to learn a new style after only just being familiar with an old style. Instead, it's best to start with the new style as soon as possible. I am sure you have seen in previous lessons my code underlined with red. This typically indicates an error, yet our code compiles and runs just fine. So what are these red underline errors? These are errors because I have my Visual Studio environment set up in such a way that enforces a coding style and a standard. And if I do not follow those styles, I get big red underline errors enforcing me to write code in a standard way that I've defined. One of those underlying red errors is because of declaring variables in the explicit way, such as int my int. In this lesson you will learn about the var keyword. It allows you to replace the explicit type names, such as int, bool and string, with the universal var keyword, and allow the compiler to figure out the type based on the value being assigned to it. That means the compiler has enough information from the assignment value to understand and know what the type of variable should be, without the user having to then explicitly state the same fact. Let's take a look at some code to see this in action. Let's start by writing out some code of all the built-in types we have used so far. If you ever wanted to know what the default values of types are, you can just debug it. We've created a bunch of variables like this. And as you know from previous lessons, even without specifying a value, value types, which is what all of these are, with the exception of the string, all get automatically assigned the default value. If you can't remember what the default value of a type is, simply place a breakpoint at the end of the main method Press F5 to run your code and inspect the locals window for all of the default values. Remember that's the power of software and debugging. If you wonder something or want to know or prove something, don't Google it. Instead, write the code, run it, debug it and find out for yourself. So here we now have a bunch of variables with their default values. It's rare you will create variables without assigning them a value. Now let's learn about literals. Literals, as we have briefly talked about, are hard typed values we will write to give variables some data, such as 1, 6.5, true, or hello world. Booleans, characters, and strings are all easy. Their literals are true or false, a single character inside single quotes, or a string of characters inside a double quote. However, number types are a little more complex. As we can see here, if we try to assign 1.1 to a float or a decimal, If we hover over the red squiggly of the value, we can see it states literal of type double cannot be implicitly converted to a type float. It even suggests to use the suffix f to create a literal of this type, and that is what we are going to do. This is because literal values of numbers need prefixes or suffixes, meaning to put something before or after the value, to be explicit about the type we want to create. 1.1 on its own could be a float, a double, or a decimal. By default, if there is no prefix or suffix, it is a double. Otherwise, we need to be explicit about our intent to create a specific type. We are basically going to flip the declaration on its head, and instead of specifying the type on the left-hand side of the assignment, 
we want to declare it on the right side. This will work hand in hand with the var keyword we will come to in a moment. Let's start with the decimal variable. Firstly, let's fix that assignment value. Instead of just a number such as 1.1, to tell a compiler we are trying to create a literal of type decimal, we prefix it with the letter M. We can see this by hovering over and it suggests the letter M. We can create a lowercase or uppercase letter and the preference would be to create an uppercase letter to keep things standard as when we get to longs and ulongs they use a lowercase l which is easily confused with the number one. So the suffixes will be uppercase. By doing 1.1 and the uppercase m we have now explicitly defined in this part of the statement that this is a decimal. So there is no longer a complaint about assigning this value. One of the principles of coding in general is called dry. It means do not repeat yourself. Well, we are now repeating ourselves. We have specified something twice. Do you know what it is? We have declared to the compiler that we want a decimal variable twice. Firstly, by telling the compiler with the keyword decimal that our my decimal variable should be of type decimal. Secondly, with the value we are assigning to the variable, we have declared the type decimal with the suffix m. Both of these express an intent to the compiler so both sides of our expression are trying to declare the same thing. This is breaking dry and we are repeating ourselves with two declarations of the type decimal. A problem with this comes, for example, if we declare an integer with the value 1, the default literal 1 is an integer already. It requires no prefix or suffix just like a double requires no prefix or suffix because these are the default values. However, here we have two declarations of an int type. Firstly, by providing a literal value one, which is declaring the type int, and then by declaring an integer type here. If we then change this to a floating point number, we now get the problem of cannot implicitly convert the type double to int. We would then have to change this side of the argument to a double to satisfy the expression. To remove this repetition and to make our code smaller, more standardized and easier to maintain, we are going to remove the type keywords everywhere which are these byte, sbyte, short, ushort, all of these type keywords. With very rare exceptions, we won't ever be stating our variable types using these keywords anymore. And instead, we will declare the type of variable by the assignment part of the statement. So it's time to get familiar with literal types. Let's start with bytes. Bytes are prefixed with a zero and a B, and then are followed by a set of zeros and ones to declare the bytes. S bytes are the same, but as they are signed, they can also start with a minus zero B. Shorts don't have a suffix, so for now we can use something called casting. You will learn about this in a future lesson. Ints by default have no suffix or prefix. So a whole number by default is already an integer. Uints like shorts require casting. Long use the suffix al. And we use an uppercase al here as a lowercase looks similar to a one. ulong use ul suffix floats use f suffix 
Double is the default type of a number with a decimal, so there is no need for a suffix. And decimals use the M suffix. Booleans, characters and strings have no suffix as they have their own keywords such as true and false and single quotes and double quotes. Now that we have declared the variable types on the assignment side of the calls, you can see my coding standards complaining in a lot of places that we should use var instead of an explicit type. It is as simple as replacing all of the type keywords with the universal var keyword. Now they are all replaced, firstly we get a much nicer lineup of variable names when declaring multiple variables in a row. And if you are unsure about the type that the variable is being given, simply hover over its name and you will see it explicitly states decimal my decimal, double my double, float my float. This is because even while typing, before compiling, the IntelliSense, the assistive tool helping make code suggestions while we type, is aware and smart enough to know the type of variable because it is defined on the literal statement side. Let's do what we did before and change the int to a double. As you can see there are no errors and if you hover over the variable name it has been changed to a double. This ability to dynamically change the variable type by changing what it is assigned to is powerful and it makes writing code quicker, simpler and cleaner. Behind the scenes when it is compiled to IL code, var does not exist. The code simply gets changed back to the explicit variable type, such as int my int. This is why when we hover over the variable name, it doesn't say var my int, it explicitly states int my int. This allows us to write code smaller, quicker and drier. An important thing to note, this ability to change the variable type isn't magic. It simply replaces the var keyword with the correct type when compiling. For example, if after the integer has been created, we cannot assign a decimal to it, or any other type, as its type has already been defined once it is assigned. You can see doing so gives us the error cannot implicitly convert the type double to int. This small change in how you write code will mean you have to pay more attention to the values being assigned and not care about the variable var on the left hand side. All the focus is now on the right side. This prevents having to focus on both sides of the expression to find out the type of variable, as well as having to change both sides of the expression if the type of variable changes. All you have to do is change the data being passed in. The main takeaway from this lesson is to know that the var keyword is not magic. It simply lets the right hand side of the expression define the type of variable instead of letting the left hand side enforce it. You should be aware of literal prefixes and suffixes and the default types of values. These are all of them you will encounter so there isn't much to learn. Binary starts with 0b. Shorts, u shorts and u ints all have to be cast. Ints and doubles are default for whole numbers and floating point numbers. Longs are a capital L, U longs are UL, floats are F and decimals are M. As mentioned if nothing is specified a whole number is an int and a fractional number is a double. This is also for good reason. The most common whole number variable type is int and the most common floating point type is double. So for the most part, you won't be using suffixes and prefixes in your literals. From now on, we will only use the var keyword for variables. 
And remember, if you are unsure, you can just hover over the variable name to see its type until you get used to the literal values. Or you can debug your code and see the variable types in the locals window.